Hi everybody, Peter of England. Today's video is one that is a repeat of two previous. One that was done in 2012 for Julian Assange and the second one was done in 2019 for Tommy Robinson and the one today is an open letter or open video broadcast for the benefit of Russell Brand. So at the beginning let me just say anyone that is in contact with him or anyone who feels after listening to this video that they would um, do him some good by uh, posting the link or contacting him through email or whatever other communication channel you might have with him then I would like you to pass this on so that he can make his own informed judgment as to the veracity of what I'm trying to communicate to him. So um, it's all of you out there that maybe can help uh, to, to do this uh, because obviously I've got limited uh, communication channels through to someone like that. The situation that he finds himself in is complex and at the same time simple. What we have now that we didn't have in uh, 2012 or 2019 when I did these, these other two videos, uh, we didn't have this woke cancel culture, this conformity with the state protocol at any cost, otherwise you're out and you are um, demonetized, your platform is, is condemned and no longer can you, um, should we say, earn a living by broadcasting your opinions uh, and ideas to the world at large. So what's happened with Russell Brand is that there has been a deliberate targeting of him for obvious reasons. And it doesn't need me to explain to you what those reasons are. Uh, one of the main faults, though, I can see that I would think he has adopted is he actually thought he could bargain, he could negotiate with tyranny, with tyrants. Um, he thought he could uh, steer a middle path by presenting both sides of the possible argument. And he did that with a, a reason so that he could continue earning on these platforms, whether that be Rumble or whether it be um, YouTube uh, or whatever other media outlets he uses, um, and also to do his, uh, his comedian tours around the UK in the height of or during the, the, um, the COVID um, um, pandemic uh, um, catastrophe, catastrophe for the nation. So that's, that's the, the, the main problem. These individuals, these um, people who have decided that they want to go against him are going for a very, very simple reason. And that reason is he's become very, very popular and anyone that can pull 7 million um, uh, subscribers out of the, uh, let's say, probably the European or Commonwealth theatre of, uh, of consultation Necessary, necessarily becomes a challenge. Now he could carry on, it could get bigger, but they've decided, like they've done with many people in the past, enough is enough and let's cut it there. So this is the main thing. You can't negotiate, you can't bargain, you can't think, give them the benefit of the doubt because they are uh, sociopaths, they're narcissistic psychopaths that just will be satisfied not only when the body is lying on the ground but when it's been trampled and turned into dust they will still peck at it uh, and, and do whatever they need to discredit it. So that's the, the open message to Russell Brand. You're in a bit of a fix pal and you need to do something to get out of it. Now, what that getting out of it is, or what it entails, is complex, but very simple. It is uh, the same protocols that I suggested for Tommy Robinson and have done so face to face with him, and the same protocols that I suggested to uh, Julian Assange. The links of these two videos on my channel from 2012 and 2019, I will post in the, um, uh, in the description below, so I'd be honoured if you people would go and watch those. Um, so what is being uh, orchestrated, what is being manoeuvred, what is being put in place and why? So what we have here is a, a system that, that's been put in place of retrospective uh, cancellation of opinion. 
So generally speaking, what has always been a rule of law is that you can't retrospectively outlaw something um, to, the, to, the, to the, the inconvenience of the individual. For example, uh, seat belts weren't in cars, say, throughout the 60s. So what you can't do is you can't retrospectively in 2023 pass a law saying that all people that were driving a car in, 20, uh, sorry, in 1965 or whenever uh, broke the law. Never has that been allowed. But what we have now in today's age is that people can be systematically um, outlawed, be um, socially deprived, uh, be um, blamed for opinions that were quite normal and quite healthy or quite active in a previous period. So this is the entire nature of the woke, the cancel culture. It's conformity, conformity, conformity. Don't speak out. Not only does it clamp you from what happened in the past, but going forward, it ensures that you do not speak out against anything, no matter how disagreeable it is. To that extent, what has happened is um, the powers that are controlling this in the background, and it isn't at a governmental level, it's at a, uh, it's at a puppet master level, which is the mechanism that is providing the handlers into Whitehall and um, to uh, administrative bureaucracy worldwide. These handlers uh, have decided enough's enough and they're going after him to an extent that they are trying to paint him with the same brush as uh, the, the sexual predator or the uh, necromancer, uh, Jimmy Savile. Uh, and so the same group, I think that it's called Operation Hydrant uh, of the Metropolitan Police, the ones that were in charge of the Jimmy Savile uh, investigation, uh, joke, um, are being tasked with looking into the, the Russell Brand saga. Whether, Russell, you are listening to this now, or whether you realise it or realise it not, as far as your career is concerned, unless I am um, amazingly wrong, and I hope I am on this point, um, you're going to become a back number almost from now. Um, the degree and the menace of the litigation that's going to be brought against you is going to ensure that you will spend all of your time either briefing barristers, speaking with lawyers, going for a trial and finding that you're not really making much traction. So with the you know, this Operation Hydrant, for example. If the Metropolitan Police or any other police department and even Interpol internationally were serious about looking into investigations about trafficking of children or human trafficking, they would have done so and could have done so much more effectively uh, in the past because uh, there is around about how many children that go missing worldwide every year? Anyone know? Yep, that's it. Not one million, not two, not doubling it to four. Let's double it again from four to eight. And that's roughly how many children go missing every single year and don't get accounted for. So are you telling me they can't be tracked or found? Maybe it's because people don't want to track and find, a la Jeffrey Epstein and all these other organizations um, that are, are involved in this. So it's always the same playback. It's always the same menu that they use on, on people. Um, similarly, what they did on Andrew Tate. Similarly, what they've done on Julia, uh, Julian Assange. What they did on Max Hitler Hastings. What they've done on people like Gary Glitter, Rolf Harris. Um, they sacrifice these individuals to the public's desire uh, in the belief that, oh, well, you know, that's another one that's taking up the headlines. And so when, once that's been put through the mill, we're all OK. It's almost like a sacrifice, a sacrificial right. And it just so happens that Russell Brand is the target number one for now. So uh, it's a career problem and it's going to get probably worse for you, uh, Russell. But something I think can be done. Solution question. So that's the question. Uh, if you do the same as everyone else who's gone down this path of litigation, if you do what they do, the result is, I assure you, going to be the same. 
and the Knights Templar used to have a saying, um, and this was, if they had an enemy, they would look to wrap themselves or involve them in three things. Either wrap them in debt, wrap them in litigation, or wrap them in a shroud. So what they've got here is, you haven't got a debt problem at the moment, um, but they're wrapping you in litigation, which will preoccupy you, I assure you, for God knows how long. And at the end of it, you'll still come out almost like David Icke did on the Wogan interview, um, sullied by the, the reputation that they tried to stick to you. So whether they, they, they succeed in an open court or whether some change of mind allows you to buy yourself free, the result is going to be the same. It'll always be, hmm, that Russell Brand, not quite sure. So it's like graffitiing a work of art. It doesn't matter whether it's Michelangelo's David. As soon as somebody graffitis it, you know, um, that's it. Um, something that's endured very, very long and was very pleasant now suddenly looks, even with a paint job, not as good. So that's really what's, what's happening here. The, 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 the wheels are turning and they won't stop. The, the, the muzzle of the gun has come around to you and so you're on, on target for now. So if you do what everyone else does, if you do what Julian Assange does and Tommy Robinson has done, what Steve Bannon has done, what Roger Stone has done, uh, Andrew Tate, Alex Jones, you're going to end up in a court of law paying fortunes to fucking barristers and lawyers that have no interest other than what's called maintaining the integrity and honour of the court and not embarrassing the judge. What do you think that means? And I don't understand why people like Tucker Carlson, the people like Alex Jones, all these people who are into the so-called, the conspiracy of the establishment, why do they still think that they can rely on the, the number one hyena or jackal group that protects the, the whole entourage? And that's what they're there to do. They're there to do one single simple thing, and that is to convince you or manipulate you into a position whereby you think you're being looked after, you're being catered for, but at the same time, what they're gonna do is run your bank account down to zero or as close as they can. And then after these continuous promises of, well, I think you've got a real, real good chance of winning, they come along and say, well, we don't really know what happened there. It came from left field. The, you know, the jury just didn't find in your favor. Now, you've got a system there which the judge will ensure goes, uh, goes on, and that's something called selective conclusioning. That's where all the facts are taken over a one week or two week or three week trial. And then when the judge summarizes the, the evidence, um, he gives certain directions. It doesn't matter whether the guy was sitting there with a gun pointed at his head and shot himself three times, if that would be possible, they will maintain that they were able to shoot themselves three times. So that's what you're up against. You're, you're up against a, a mayhem. You've got the media moguls, you've got the Masonic structure, and you have got the judiciary there, and you have collectively a mayhem. So this is an end of times play out. They will sacrifice who and whomever they want uh, whenever they want. So the solution now, the question is, well, if you do what everyone else does, the outcome is going to be the same. So what do you need to do? So this is coming to the wrap up, the punchline, the, um, the unique selling point for you to come in and go, right, okay, yes, I think I can look at this, but at least consider it. The solution is the only way out of this is changing your status within the legal system. Now, there is under a series of Vatican uh, protocols, Vatican papal bulls, a relationship between the, the valuables, the creatures on the estate that is claimed by the Church of Rome, historically, and you. 
And so what you need to do is, if you walk into the court, ever giving your name, your date of birth, and your address, you are implicitly agreeing and explicitly buying in to a series of presumptions that are running in the courts and are running in society. And those three consents bind you to. Why do you think uh, every time that Tommy Robinson goes into court, they always address him as Stephen Yaxley Lennon, not Stephen Lennon or uh, Tommy Robinson. They always ask him for his date of birth. Same with Julian Assange. It's basically saying, yes, uh, unbeknownst to me, I agree to the straw man identification on a piece of paper. So it's the character. It's the straw man character, the persona, the act that they're going after, Russell. They're going after you as the actor that is portrayed into this deathbed chorus of what we call society. It's not the natural man they're going after. They're going after that identity, the comedianic uh, um, commercial aspect that's earning money within their system, which they've decided now they don't want any more of. So if it goes to trial, when it goes to trial, the only question that the judge is ever really posing to the clerk or the prothonotary or the clerk of the court of the crown in chancery is, has this man proven himself to be alive? Yes or no? It's a proof of life deal. If you're going to proceed as a normal, all capitals, birth certificated entity into that system, then I assure you, like the rolling of the thunder in the background here, the result is going to be exactly the same because they are looking at you as a minor. If you go to CFR, uh, I think it's CFR 31, 31 CFR 363, Code of Federal Regulations, for example, in the United States, it has a definition of what's a minor. A minor is anyone that has not yet attained the age of majority, typically 18 years of age. A minor is also someone who has attained the age of 18, but has not yet reclaimed his estate. So what is it that you need to reclaim? Why is it that you can't speak openly and without let or hindrance in a court of law? And if the judge accuses you or tells you to be quiet, if you disobey, yeah, is this not proving that you're incompetent? Is it not proving you don't really know what's going on? Isn't that why they threaten you with contempt and have you removed from the court? Isn't that why, in effect, really, what's taking place here is a system or one of the, um, the ecclesiastical sacraments of the Roman Catholic Church, that of the sacrament of confession, where the prosecutor is putting your sins to the priest and you have some means of defence by the defence counsel actually representing you in your stead. But not you, not you, because you don't have a right to be talking. You are not one of them. You are not allowed to speak. So that's going to weigh on everything you do. And don't forget the inns of court, the four principal inns of court, plus the scriveners and the, the society of notaries that control all the affidavits, all the foreign apostilles that go out, they are all ecclesiastical appointments. Why do you think we have clerks or clerics in the courts? Why do you think all ministers of the crown are called ministers? Yeah, it doesn't take uh, a genius to figure it out. I don't dismiss it by just saying, oh, that's just some old you know, nomenclature that's the hangover from the, you know, 12th, 13th century and uh, it doesn't count for anything anymore. Well, go tell that to, to Welby, the Archbishop of Canterbury, when he goes through all the rigmarole of, of crowning Charles. You know, if none of this matters at all, why did, why did they bother to do it? So you can't have it both ways. You've either got to step forward and start looking at something different 
and that's radically different in their eyes. You've got to throw something left field, otherwise you are going to end up possibly in prison, fined, or uh, doing community service for the rest of your life. Uh, uh, or you could even emotionally or psychologically implode. I don't know. They don't care. They don't care what they get or as long as what, we're, what they're doing is looking for a termination of you. A bit like uh, the role played by Keanu uh, Reeves in uh, that John Wick series where they put, uh, they cancel the bond. I think it was called Indexa. I can't remember what the expression was, but they actually cancelled the bond on him and basically made it uh, free season on him. Anyone could kill him, and that, that's how, how, how these ecclesiastical deals run. So they have no morals. They have no integrity. It doesn't matter who you've offended. Do you think they're not offending people in the background with the Luciferian uh, Crowley um, rites of performing anal sex on each other and on children, on sacrificial satanic rites, wherever they may go, um, uh, or take them or lead them. You think the Met Police, Met, Metropolitan Police, Metropolitan meaning um, uh, something that is controlled or under the jurisdiction of a bishop. Do you, do you think they don't know where the bodies are buried, metaphorically speaking? Of course they do but it's the Masonic system and the Blue Lodges internationally that control it and Interpol in its turn that handle it, yeah? So the Attorney General, member of Interpol, Home Secretary, member of Interpol, they've taken an oath of not to uh, embarrass even Interpol, so they are all working on behalf of a foreign, external, dominant jurisdiction that hasn't got your name on its membership list right now. Um, in meaning they're looking for you and they're coming for you. So the final thing to, to say there for is there is no debtor creditor relationship. There is only a trustee beneficiary relationship. The clue and the way out of all this is what's called moving titles in trust. And to that extent, what I'd love you to do is go on to the website. Um, there are links I will put in the description down below. Go to removement.net and go to the shop and you'll find two interesting documents that pertain to your particular situation right now. One is called Sacrament uh, and the other one is what's called the Lazarus Taxon creditor de son tort. So it doesn't matter what's going on. They aren't interested in the dollars. What they're interested in is the, the, the collection and zeroing on the account. You have been charged. A charge has been levied against you. So a charge needs compensating. There is a prepaid series of accounts out there. There are a series of bonds out there with QCIP numbers on them that have got your name on them. And at the moment, what they want is you in court as the guarantor, the surety, and the underwriter of the problem that they've decided is a problem. So they are in effect now handling full 100% your uh, beneficial entitlement under a property estate, which they deem that you have abandoned. They've deemed you to abandon it because you never reclaimed it. So the way forward is not only the reclamation of the estate, expressing the controversy, but coming back as the unknown beneficiary. And I promise you that if you go this way, the results will be nigh on miraculous. I would advise anyone else out there to follow suit. And this may be that you could be the, the vanguard. You could be the, 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 the window mannequin for this movement. Because if you can start to bring it to fruition as the individual that you are, 
and with the fact that you are now firmly in the crosshairs, they've either got to spit you out for some reason and run the other way, or they've got to pursue. If they pursue the way they're going, and obviously you go down the normal, conventional, employing a barrister and then employing a legal team, which will cost you millions for this one. If you go down that way, I guarantee, just look back statistically and historically and look at the, the, the wake of the ship behind all those who've tried it. They've all failed and failed miserably. And even if you were a multi-billionaire, if you were the president of the United States, the message out there from the Trump perspective is, even with all that clout, even with being president of the United States, doesn't do you any good. When we want to come for you, you might as well say goodbye. So that's what I'd say. Thank you very much. Anyone who uh, can get this through to Russell Brand, brilliant. Uh, or contacts or his agent, just get it to him. Um, like it, pass it on. I would expect, because of the interest on this subject, and I've waited deliberately a couple of weeks for it to settle to see where it was going, most people I would uh, strongly suggest will need the sacrament document and the Lazarus. Sorry, the, the Lazarus, I got those the wrong way around. Um, particularly the Lazarus taxon. Lazarus and a taxon, for those of you who want an explanation, is something that's come back um, that was presumed to be dead. So that's the significance of the unknown be beneficiary presenting himself in the chancery division and saying, I'm now here under a special appearance in camera to now quiet, tightly, uh, entitly clear the decks and apply for the restitution of my estate as beneficial owner, settlor, and grantor. And with that, let's wrap it up. And Peter of England says, thanks for watching.